Hello, I'm Atu Jameer and you're watching on Bill TV's Prime at 9. The second state-level multi-stakeholder consultation on SDGs 2030 was held today at the CBLT conference hall in Twensang with peace activist Niketio Iralu, Women Secretary of POM Baptist Churches Association, Ang Pen POM and entrepreneur Pangsha Chingmak as panels. The panels spoke on topics peace, justice and strong institution. Peace building to achieve sustainable development goals in Nagaland, inclusive and quality education in Nagaland and build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation in Nagaland. A tribal Bogos president will be always a male. A male will be taking care of the whole society and women will just take part, uh, uh, carry the burden of mothers association or women organization only. Why it is so? Have we have we pondered upon that? Have we taken a thought on that? I have observed in this society, my kid can't can't get to all of serious now like he. In that sense, even even I have uh, see I won't put one example. I, some examples are coming in back of my mind, I won't put here. Uh, women here also themselves have, are quite uh, okay with the things going in the society. They are not challenging those things. They are quite happy. So that's why uh, this uh, gender equality uh, is uh, quite a burning issue presently in the, our state. Uh, they are all powerful institutions in their own fields. Then the NGOs of all kinds, some of which were all mentioned by RDC, they are all run by people. And so I think you will reflect with me on this, that the human element is the problem. That's where we have to give our attention. Not an easy thing, but otherwise we are wasting our time responsible, unique part they are destined to play by their maker for the sake of building the just fair society on earth or do they think and behave like leeches so that government by them and for them becomes too destructive for everybody Government by the leaders, by them and for them. I think that's an ugly word to, to use. But frankly, again speaking from Kohima and Himabur area. Unrealistic and irrelevant education package may look too good and extravagant in presentation, but at the end, there's no deck. Luja will keep in mind. This is a struggle. Trying to make the SDGs more realistic and contextual is a happy package, actually. To have the ideation that Nagaland or our region will also get its own customized educational privilege delights me, but of course with lots of responsibility. It is a delight, honestly. To access a discussion in the table, which I'm talking about the later table, where we will look forward to extensive sharing, elaborated effort and input, I will be talking about inclusive education and quality education as two decisive compartments in a very brief way and will look forward to get more from you. When we look into that policy token, uh, the Netherlands Vision 2030, uh, it talks about a number of metrics or index, especially on development sectors. And when we look into the, those development sectors, um, I'm given to understand where I found out that, especially Eastern Nagaland or districts in Eastern Nagaland, fall way, way below the, uh, the rest of the state or most of the uh, key development metrics or index. Especially the government sector will give just about maybe a thousand or two uh, in a year. And so students like you are graduating, 20, 30,000 are graduating every year. 
And that gives us a cushion, especially, and I think it will be an important topic of discussion for us to, uh, to consider. The central government has initiated or developed so many schemes. For example, uh, you know, the concept of the topic like Skill India, Startup India, Make in India, Digital India, etc. Unfortunately, in Nagaland and in our part of this world, I think we have missed the train. Uh, this project has been ongoing for now a couple of years now. But uh, we are yet to see uh, the light of the day in terms of uh, developing or enhancing this this uh, this particular sector. 